In this short book review episode, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on polyvagal safety from Dr. Stephen Porges and other writers as well. Uh, I'm going to review the audio and the hard copy of the book. My name is Justin Sinceri. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist that's kind of obsessed with the polyvagal theory. Welcome to Stuck Not Broken. So after this review, if you do feel uh, compelled, moved, motivated, inspired to buy the book, I will have a link in the description. So let's just kind of get straight to it. Do I recommend this book, uh, Polyvagal Safety, Attachment, Communication, Self-Regulation? Yeah, and also nah. It really kind of depends on who you are and what you want it for, your professional level, your understanding of polyvagal theory. A lot of things come into play here. So yeah, but also nah. And of course, I'm going to get in a little bit more detail here. So what it, does it cover? It covers a lot. Here's um, a sampling of what it goes through. This, this is most of it. it. goes through what play is and how it relates to polyvagal theory and safety, neurocardiology, yoga therapy, mindfulness-based movement, group psychotherapy, human-animal interactions, therapeutic presence, autism, stillness, so a whole bunch of stuff that this book covers. Uh, and what I was most interested in and was not disappointed by was, or is, Dr. Porges' response to critiques of the polyvagal theory. So I really liked that section the most out of it. Uh, I think it's worth buying just for that. If you have a decent understanding of the critiques, which I say I, I, I think I would say I have, uh, when really the critiques that it, when it comes down to critiques of polyvagal theory, it's pretty scientific-y, jargony kind of stuff, and it's out of my league and out of most of our leagues. Unless you're like hardcore science type and you actually understand that type of language, but it's pretty darn sciencey. But I kind of get the basic ideas of of what the critiques are, and then to see Porges or read, read and hear Porges's um, responses to those, I get the basic idea, and that's kind of good enough for me. Uh, I do eventually want to learn that deeper science jargony stuff, uh, but I'm just not quite there yet. So for now, I'm kind of satisfied with the critiques and the responses to the critiques, which I can't get into here. Uh, but that, that's kind of why the, the main reason I bought this book was I really wanted to, to read the critiques of it, but I also just wanted to own the book. And that's kind of uh, who I recommend this for is, well, one, someone who's like hardcore into political theory really into the science stuff, but also the person that just kind of wants to collect the book. I just kind of want to have it. I'm really into the polyvagal theory and I feel like I need to own the book or this, this book, all the books. So who's it for? If you need to own it because you're that hardcore, that nerdy in polyvagal theory, then this is for you. Uh, if you're a polyvagal enthusiast, if you're a collector, get the book. Uh, the majority of these articles are actually online for free. This is not just like a book that he sat down and wrote. This is a collection of articles. Some are just for him, from him, but some of them he collaborated with other people on to write. And they took all those articles and collected them into this book. One of the, I think the last article in the book is actually a, uh, an interview he did with somebody about uh, COVID, yeah. So it's not just a book he sat down and wrote. It's it's a collection of articles. And the majority of these are online already. You can read them for free. And I went to the effort, because I love you so much, I went to the effort of finding links and I put them in the description. And again, the majority of these are available online for free. But if you're a collector, then you, you, just, you just buy it for that. Who is it not for then? This is not for someone who is new to the polyvagal theory. If you're brand new to polyvagal theory, uh, this should not be the place where you start this book nor this episode. I have a bunch, a bunch of polyvagal resources that are for free. Uh, you can find them on justinlmft.com. I have my polyvagal intro page. I have a brand new, my own polyvagal theory book. It's called Trauma and the Polyvagal Paradigm. That's for free. Just sign up for my email list. Actually, it's for free on my blog as well. You don't even have to sign up for my email list. It's on my blog. So that's for free. You have the podcast, Stuck Not Broken, episodes 101 through 109. That's for free. All of these are very in-depth looks into the polyvagal theory. You will not be disappointed. But if that's not enough for you, if you're one of the collectors, if you just have to hear things differently each time, which is kind of like I'm, I'm that way, if you just need to hear it differently or see it in a different format, I also have my polyvagal 101 virtual class, highly condensed into two hours. 
uh, very streamlined and easy to understand. That's on justinlmft.com. So all kinds of polyvagal intros and deep dives that I've given you, this book would not be the place to go for that. So even though it's called Polyvagal Safety, I mean, yeah, it's true. The book does talk a lot about that, but it's not like a workbook. You're not going to be building your polyvagal safety. You're not going to be doing journaling around safety and polyvagal theory and whatnot. That, that is not what this is for. These are like, it's essays or articles, uh, discussions. This is not something that you're going to like go to for your own self-development. If you're looking for that, I also have you covered in there, there as well with building safety anchors. That is my course. Again, justinlmft.com. I have a course dedicated entirely to helping people identify and build their capacity to feel safety. So if you're looking for that, this book is not for you. This is pure education, lecturing, and writing, all, all kind of in one place. So what do I like? What I do like is that this is a really good reference book, just like his other ones, and Deb Dana's as well, though Deb Dana has more uh, journaling and uh, meditation stuff uh, components in hers. But just for Portis's works, it's a great reference book. It, it's, it's teaching. It's education. It's a great place to go to say, hey, what did he say about that thing? And you can go to one of the books uh, and look it up. That, I mean, that, it's, it's a reference book. That's, it's fantastic for that. If I love to put out polyvagal quotes, and I'll use his quotes in like books that I'm writing or blogs. So for me, it's fantastic to have it on hand and say, hey, what was that thing? And just pull a quote from it. So it's worth owning as a reference. And I like that there's a lot of topics. I mean, yoga, group therapy, therapeutic presence, autism. This goes into a whole bunch of stuff. Again, you can find it for free online, most of the stuff, but it's all collected in, in one. I like that it's a, a very broad range of topics. This is similar to the uh, clinical applications of the polyvagal theory. That book that I believe you put together with uh, Deb Dana and uh, some other writers where they just kind of collected all these different clinical applications of the political theory into one book. But again, a broad range all in one place. So I like it for that reason. I think it's cool that it's all collected in one place in one book and you can put it on your shelf and you're good to go. If you're a collector, like I said, you, you kind of have to pick it up. What I liked about the audio book was it's mostly digestible. It's pretty sciencey stuff. Some articles are like out of our league. But for the most part, you can listen to the audio book as long as you're not using it as a reference, if that, that would not be a good place to go. But I bought the audiobook and the hardcover book uh, because I wanted to, I don't have time to just sit and read all that often. I have way more time to listen to a book in my car as I'm driving to and from work. Um, I had a couple of long trips I had to take, so I was able to listen to it. It's not the best listening. It's not super fun listening. It's pretty dry, sciencey stuff, but I like political theory, so I don't mind it. And uh, for the most part, I get it. For the most part, I, even when they get pretty jargony, I get it. Um, there was the stuff about the critiques to the critiques or, or the responses to the critiques. That gets way more, like it's farther than I'm used to as far as science jargon. So I kind of got it enough. The rest of it was, you could listen to it, I think, as long as you have a pretty basic, as long as you know my Polyvagal 101 course, if you know all that stuff, and again, you can get that through episodes 101 through 109. If you know that stuff and you feel comfortable with it, you can listen to this book and I think you'll be okay. But if you don't know the critiques and his responses to the critiques, if that's too far out of your league, you can listen to it and maybe kind of get it. But uh, I think reading it and going through it line by line, even word by word and really breaking things down is kind of what you need. So owning it in book is probably a good idea. The other thing I like about this book is there are like... When it comes to polyvagal theory, the more you hear it, I think you learn new wrinkles and new angles. And so I like that. Like I could listen to him talk about this repeatedly and for the most part, I'm okay with it. But uh, every now and then something just kind of, I hear it differently. So with this one, he introduces this idea of preparatory sets. I don't think I've heard him talk about that in the past. There's five preparatory sets, which is basically the primary mixed states minus freeze and I have my thoughts as to why that might be. Um, I'll, I'll say that for another episode, I think. So preparatory sets is something that I'm going to go, I listen to it in my car and I get the idea, I think, but I'm going to dive deeper into the book and spend more time on those ideas to make sure I really get it. So there's some new stuff here. He talks about at the end of it, there was some stuff about COVID that I heard differently. So I kind of like that too. 
What I did not like, uh, for the most part, I can listen to people talk about polyvagal theory and I'm still, I hear it a different way and I'm, I'm interested. But at the same time, this book is extremely redundant. These, this was not made to be a book. This was like, these articles weren't made to be a book. These articles were made to be articles or essays that stand on their own. So each of them in their own way kind of retreads what the polyvagal theory is within itself. And so you collect all these articles and essays that each have a discussion of what polyvagal theory is and then, and then apply it. But then basically as a reader to a book, you're reading about the polyvagal theory over and over and over again. And it gets pretty annoying. I wish that they had edited this to be more of a book rather than just collecting a bunch of articles that stand on their own. So it's really annoying. And a, an audio book, I don't know if it's more annoying because it's harder, a little bit harder to skip, but I found myself just like going, oh my God, again. And I would just like skip, 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 skip. If you know polyvagal theory, I've spent a lot of time with this stuff. So if you know it, it gets kind of annoying after a while. I even found myself as I was listening to this, kind of knowing what they were going to say next. There was a part where I was listening to the book where they, I, I knew the next line was going to be that 80% of fibers in the vagal nerve are going from the body to the brain. And like I called it and that's the exact thing they, they said next. And I was like, okay, I, I get this stuff so well that I, I can predict what they're going to say next. So it, it's highly predictable if you spend enough time with this stuff, highly repetitive as well. So really, it's kind of like you're just sort of collecting it and you just kind of want to own it. Again, a lot of this stuff you can find online for free. So you got to be a pretty hardcore polyvagal nerd to just want to have it on your bookshelf. That's really kind of, I think, the point of this. Some of these you can't find online for free or you got to sign up for whatever it is. So eh, maybe for that, but for the most part, you can find it for free. And apparently there's a market for this because I don't know why else this book needed to be made except for those of us that just kind of have to own it. What I did not like about the audio version is pretty obvious. It's not for reference. It's, it's audio. It's, I have a dog here saying hello. This is Ginger. The audio book is, is a, it's not for reference. It's not supposed to be used for reference. So you buy it because you get it enough, the polyvagal theory enough that you can just listen to it and you're fine. The other thing I didn't like about the audiobook is the voice is pretty monotone and it can it's dry material with a fairly monotone voice, not a whole lot of vocal prosody in the written or the uh, spoken version of this. So it, it can be hard to listen to. So like you combine the voice, the dry material, the repetitive material, the audiobook is difficult. Uh, if you're going to get the audiobook or read the book, I'd recommend just doing one article at a time. Don't rush through it. Take your time with it. Do one at a time. Space it out. Come back to it. Because if you, if you do it back to back like I did, it like, I, like I've already said, it gets boring. It gets repetitive. It actually kind of gets irritating. That's not. I don't think that's how this is supposed to be taken in. That's it though. Those are my thoughts on polyvagal safety, the audio and the physical copy of the book. If you feel compelled to own it, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening and or watching. Bye.